Hi everyone, we're back on Three Body Problems again. Uh, I'm Dr. Jeff Silverman in San Francisco, California, and I'm joined as always by Dr. Rachel Livermore up in Melbourne, Australia. And we're sticking with Gemini Observatory this week, and we have with us Dr. Meg Schwamm, who is an assistant scientist at Gemini Observatory based out of the Northern Operations Center in Hawaii. Hi, Meg. Hi, thanks for having me. And so what we wanted to talk to Meg about, I'm very, very excited about because it's about aliens. <laughs> Please don't correct me. You'll ruin my day. So you may have seen in the news recently that there was this um, interstellar object that passed through our solar system. And you actually observed this, right, from Gemini. Um, so I was part of an observing program that used Gemini, yes. So um, the object you're talking about is Oumuamua, which is the first interstellar object to, that is confirmed to have moved through our solar system, temporary visiting, and uh, briefly, briefly, briefly uh, sort of swung by the inner solar system. So uh, it's a really interesting and neat object um, because it's the first of its kind. And what we mean by interstellar object is it's something that didn't form in our solar system that fell into the gravitational potential. Of the, of the sun and came through, sort of felt the sun, sort of swung by and left. So it's really sort of a temporary visitor and therefore whatever it is, it formed in some other solar system um, and was kicked out at some point and sent into interstellar space. How could you tell that it came from outside our solar system? So for this object, we know because it was coming in at such a steep angle and such a high velocity that it had no way it could have interacted with the giant planet. So there's no way the giant planets could have put it onto hyperbolic orbit, and therefore it had to be on that while it was falling into the, sun, the sun's potential well. So I want to take a step back here. Could you repeat the name of this object for us, and where does that come from? Because it sounds pretty unique. Yeah, so Aumuamua, uh, it's Hawaiian. So it was named because of the, the Discovery Telescope and, and the location of the team. So this object was discovered on uh, in Hawaii on... Haleakala with the Panstar survey. So they're surveying night after night with a two meter telescope, looking for near earth asteroids among other things and happened to see this object sort of lurking in the interstellar system. So um, the name is in reference to, to sort of being the first of its kind and sort of being a navigator. And my understanding is that Hawaiian language experts gave their input on the name. Have you been able to tell um, what it's actually made of? Um, is it something different from our solar system, like unobtainium, unobtainium or vibranium? <laughs> so the boring answer is, is that no, it doesn't look any different than any of the things in our solar system. As you know, I'm kind of obsessed with aliens. Um, and I have to say that if I was an alien and I wanted to sneak my spaceship into someone else's solar system, I would make my spaceship look like something ordinary in their solar system. So, does it have aliens? <laughs> Maybe. Um, if it is, it's the lamest aliens ever. So, one of the things is, it's, it's definitely not... So, the thing is that this thing is very elongated. So, um, the estimates range from, like, 10 to 1 to 5 to 1 in, in ratio. So, it's very, such like, flat, cigar-shaped. Um, the, the newer estimates take into account that this thing is tumbling. So from the light curve, it's actually like it's not a quietly, quite uniform rotation. It's actually tumbling. So it's not, you know, so if you think about the, you know, was it the 2001 Space Odyssey obelisks, it's not moving like that. Also, we've looked for radio signals from it. So astronomer, a couple of radio arrays have looked at it and found nothing. Um, you know, maybe it's a defunct spaceship, but I don't think so. I think if everything's saying it looks like a rocky body, Occam's razor is a bitch. <laughs> so it's probably not an alien spacecraft. There's probably not aliens inside of it. It's this big rocky cigar that's tumbling through space, moving pretty quickly from outside of our solar system. Do we know what solar system it came from? If not ours, we found thousands of solar systems relatively close by. Can we kind of pinpoint where it came from? Not really. <laughs> okay. We kind of know the direction, but again, sort of, so we know that it's traveling at the, the velocity of, of field, background field stars. So that's another evidence why it, we think it came from somewhere else. It's sort of consistent with the average velocity you see of stars near in this, nearby the sun. But it's, it's not clear, we can't pinpoint one solar system, and it's not clear it hasn't had other encounters. 
So you kind of know the rough direction, but you can't nail it down and say it came from there. Um, I think the thing that's so that's interesting is that we've always predicted these things to exist because in our own solar system, the giant planets have migrated um, and kicked out planetesimals. And so it's you know we we know that that process happened in our solar system and sculpted the asteroid belt and the Kuiper belt um, and produced our or or cloud the source of our large uh, long period comets. So we know some stuff has been kicked out and has been heading in interstellar space. It's the first time we sort of confirmed that in some sense that other solar systems have done that because we finally found an object. So this thing could have been kicked out of its solar system a long time ago and then pinballed around the galaxy for a while before it cruised through our solar system. Possibly. Or, you know, it could be the first shot, but it's probably been out there a long time. So not 100% clear. You know, we can't nail it down to one star and say it came from there. Therefore, we're sampling planet formation in here. So you say that we expect these things to be pretty common. So why is this the first time something like this has been seen? Uh, well, a couple things is that the rate of them is unknown. So we don't know what these surfaces look like. So you don't know how dark they are and whether, you know, how far away can you see them with telescopes. And also um, the number of telescopes that are surveying the sky sort of and, and, and short cadences to find near-Earth objects where the best chance we're going to find these interstellar objects is when they're going to get close to the sun because they're only bright enough for like a two-week period. So for our moon, it was about two weeks or a week and a half that it was observable even with eight to 10 meter class telescopes. So for our Gemini observations, we literally got it on the last night that we could get it before the moon got too bright and got in the way and it would have been too faint for Gemini to observe it. So the, the nice thing is that if PanStars has seen one and it's, lifetime of, of operations. We expect that the behemoth coming down the line, LSST, the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope, which is going to be an eight meter telescope surveying the sky nightly, will find probably one a year. You said that it was visible with you know current telescopes uh, from discovery for about a week and a half or two weeks or so. Uh, is there any observations that people didn't get that you would have wanted to get? Like, what is the, the, the missing piece that you really want to get, you know, the next time something like this comes around? Well, I think there's, it's everything in some sense. Um, <laughs> like, spoken uh, like a good astronomer, let's get every observation. You want every observation and repeats of it, right? So it's really <laughs> nice to get multiple near IR optical observations together at the same time. Um, you know, I, I think one thing is that it's, it's such a small object. It's, it's only about, uh, I think, about 200 meters or so. So, yeah, I would like nature to provide a bigger, larger, brighter target the next time. Um, so I think that and getting a more advanced notice. So thanks so much for talking to us, Meg. It's really great to hear um, about this really cool thing from someone who actually got to see it. Thanks so much. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> cheers.